I think the mental model you have to use is you have to think of yourself as the founder or the entrepreneur. So if I look at the Walton family, they are the only ones who've held Walmart from 1970 till today. They held it after Sam Walton was gone. They held it when there were no Waltons running the place. There's no, I think there might be one Walton on the board or something. And they've had no control over this business and they've held it for the entire period. Why should an investor use a different framework from an entrepreneur? So we see this all the time, right? You, you see entrepreneurs have 99% of their wealth in the business they create. And they go to sleep at night very comfortable with that. You know, people say, well, they got control. Well, control is overrated. It's not really the control. I think that the framework we have to use is to think of ourselves as if we are not the founder, we are basically an owner or a partner. So think of it as a partnership in a private enterprise, you know. And so I think that once you make that shift where you say that, you know, this is a family business and I own 30% of the business, I'm not the founder, but I have a significant stake and I understand the business, then those two, you know, the investor and the entrepreneur start blending. I mean, we see this over and over. You see the IKEA guy, right? I mean, basically he put the entire company into a foundation. But, you know, 99.99% of his net worth was IKEA. We just see that with all these entrepreneurs all over the place. And they remain comfortable. If you look at the Google guys, you know, they, they stepped aside, but they kept their stake perfectly okay. Do you think Berkshire, let's say uh, Warren says, all right, Ted and Todd, they're awesome. Anish, we, we need your help too. What do you think we should do with Apple? This is a big, big stinking part of our portfolio. Warren's like, you know, he wouldn't say this, but I don't want to have another 1999 Coke where this thing is probably expensive. I just may, you know, the taxes, I don't want to pay taxes. This is a good business, great franchise. What do you think you would do in their their seat at this point? Would you uh, would you start to trim this big position, or would you hold on thinking this might be the world's first ten trillion dollar company? I think first five trillion too. I don't think we have a five trillion yet, do we? The framework you use when you are an, a large owner of Apple, or let's say the founder of Apple, let's say Steve Jobs' widow, for example, is not to do anything till there is a permanent secular decline. And we, real, we realize that we will not be able to cash out at the top when there is permanent secular decline. Everything at the end is going to go south. You know, that's just the nature of capitalism. I don't see anything on the horizon that is a concern for Apple for the next five or 10 years at least, and maybe beyond. So the, the simple math that I would do with, if I was at Berkshire and Someone, you know, Warren asked me this question, et cetera. I would just say, do nothing. And the way I look at it with Berkshire is they made a $2 billion investment in mid-American energy, which is today approaching $100 billion. It's a 50-bagger. Their railroad investment is huge. And they're sitting on, you know, $130, $140 billion, And there's $30 billion a year coming in. I mean, if you look at the entire enterprise, Apple is maybe a fifth of the pie, you know, fourth or fifth of the pie. We don't see any issues right now. Leave it alone. Focus on the money that's coming in and putting that to work. And even if you take a situation where at some point that value declines, there are other engines there. There are other things going on there. So I think that the framework has to be that you give it a very long leash, just like the Walton family and so on. 